हेलो एंड वेलकम टू ऑल इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर लेक्चर नंबर नाइन फ्रॉम दिस लेक्चर वी विल वी आर स्टार्टिंग यूनिट नंबर फोर इन विच वी विल डिजाइन द गियर्स एंड वी विल डू द फोर्स एनालिसिस ऑफ डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ गियर्स तो बिफोर गोइंग इन टू दैट वी विल फर्स्ट रिकॉल द बेसिक्स ऑफ द गियर्स गियर्स वॉट आर गियर्स गियर्स आर द wheels on which tooth are mounted which are used to transmit power from one shaft to another shaft by means of engagement at the time of power transmission when the two teeth are in mesh the point of contact at the point of contact the relative velocity between the two gears will be zero there is no relative velocity therefore no slipping will take place because of no slipping this drives are also called positive drives and the velocity ratio remains constant in gears so classifications of gears the gears are classified into four groups first one is the heli, uh, spur gear so on the spur gear the shafts on which the gears are mounted are parallel and the tooth in the spur gear are straight and are cut parallel to the axis of rotation there will be a radial load that will act on the spur gear a radial load and the tangential load at the time of engagement another type of gear is the helical gear in which the shafts are parallel but the teeth of the uh, uh, gears are inclined at an angle with the axis of rotation so because of this ex, uh, uh, inclination of the teeth of the teeth with the axis of rotation there will be an axial thrust acting on the shaft and then there is always a opposite hand helical gear engagement always uh, if the uh, right hand helical teeth will be in mesh in the with the left hand helical teeth or vice versa herringbone gear herringbone gear is the double helical gear and in in this type of gear no thrust load will be act on the shaft bevel gear in the bevel gear the the axis of the shafts of the two gears will be will be inclined to each other and the surface of the gears are in are is the shape of truncated cone the teeth on the bevel gear will can be straight or helical another type of gear is the worm gear worm gear are uh, worm gears are used for high speed reduction ratio the in worm gears the shaft of the the axis of the shafts on which gear is mounted are no are neither intersecting nor non parallel now law of gearing law of gearing states that the common normal to the teeth to the tooth profile at the point of contact should always pass through a fixed point called the pitch point in order to obtain a constant velocity ratio so the common normal to the tooth profile so this is the tooth profile and this is the point of contact and a common normal to the tooth profile which is n n should always pass through a fixed point p p is a fixed point which is which is a pitch point to in order to obtain a constant velocity ratio so the common normal will always pass a fixed point which is p and in order to obtain constant velocity ratio omega 1 will be equal omega 1 divided by omega 2 should be a constant for that p should be a fixed point and it will lie on the line joining joining the centers on the or joining the centers of the gears
the profile that follows the law of gearing are the involute and the cycloidal profile so involute profiles are made by tracing uh, made by tracing a locus on a point on a line which goes without slipping on a circle cycloidal curve is obtained by tracing a point on a generating circle which rolls without slipping on a piece circle inside and outside if a generating circle rotates without slipping outside the piece circle it is called the the curve is called epicycloid and the curve traced by a point generating uh, a point on generating circle which is rotates on a piece or uh, inside the piece circle is a hypocycloid then the terminologies of sphere gear so here is the diagram of sphere gear this is the top lane the top portion of the tooth this is the bottom lane bottom portion of the tooth this is the piece circle it is an imaginary circle on which a pure rolling motion will be observed this is addendum the height from the piece circle to the top of to the top lane and the height from the piece circle to the bottom lane is a dedendum the profile of the tooth above the piece circle is face and below the piece circle is flank this is face width which is in distance along the axis of the shaft which is the length of the tooth along the axis of the shaft pinion pinion is always the smaller gear between the two mating gears and it is also a driver driver gear and gear is the larger gear of the two mating gears so this is the addendum circle this is the piece circle and this is the base circle base circle is a imaginary circle above which the profiles of the two of the tooth are the involute profiles this is the dedendum circle this is the piece circle this is whole working depth this is tooth thickness thickness of the tooth and the space between the two uh, between the two teeth are two teeth is uh, tooth space working depth it is the sum of the addendums of both gears and clearance clearance is a whole depth minus the working depth velocity ratio velocity ratio is the ratio of the angular velocity of the driving gear to the angular velocity of the driven gear transmission ratio is the ratio of the angular velocity of the first driving gear to the angular velocity of the last driven gear in a gear train tooth space is a circular tooth uh, circular tooth thickness is the length of the arc on the piece circle subtending a single gear tooth is the circular tooth thickness tooth space is the width of space between the two adjacent teeth pressure pressure angle it is the angle which the line of friction makes with the common tangent to the piece circles line of friction line of friction is the common normal uh, at the point of contact between uh, at the point of contact of the two meshing gear and, and it is also tangent to the base circles P uh, circular pitch it is a length 
along measured along the piece cycle between between the two similar points on the adjacent teeth. So P will be equal to pi d the circum the circumference divided by the number of teeth. That is the number of teeth. Diametral pitch is P will be equal to z divided by d. So diametral pitch is designated as the capital P and circular pitch is designated as a small p, and the product of these two will be pi. And uh, tooth space plus tooth thickness should also be equal to the circular pitch. Tooth space is approximately equal to tooth thickness. And this will also this will equal to uh, half of circular pitch. M is the module which is defined as the inverse of diameter pitch or the ratio of the diameter to the number of teeth. Now there are some uh, standard systems of gear tooth. There are three types of standard system of gear tooth. First one is the 14.5 degree full depth involute system. Second one is 20 degree full depth involute system and third is the 20 degree stub involute system. So the, these are the these are called the basic racks. This is for 14.5 full depth, this is 20 full depth and this is 20 degree stub tooth. So the tooth space and the tooth, uh, tooth thickness are same in all the gears. There is a uh, in 14.5 degree full depth involute system pressure angle is 14.5 and uh, addendum is m, dedenum is 1.157 m. In 20 degree full depth involute system addendum is m and dedenum is 1.25 m in 20 degree stub tooth involute system the addendum is 1.8 m and the redendum is m so here the working depth is 2 m in this case is also 2 m and in this case is 1.6 m this is sum of the addendums working depth is the sum of the addendums so here it is 2m it is also 2m here it is 1.6m and the total depth is 2.157m 2.25 and 1.8m so here in this case clearance will be 0.157m and here 0.25m and here it will be 0.2m Now interference and undercutting and undercutting. Interference occurs when uh, when involute portion of one gear comes into contact with the non-involute portion of the above or of the another gear. The portion above the base circle is the involute portion of the gear and the portion below the base circle is the non-involute portion. So when the tip of the tooth on the mating gear which is involute interferes with the non involute portion of the redendum of the another here there will be overlapping and they will cut into each other and this will cause interference and this will cut a small portion from the root of the mating gear this will result in wears and vibration interference can be avoided by undercutting in which the gear the material of the gear will be cut at the at its root but undercutting weakens the tooth and also it will it will remove a small portion a small involute portion adjacent to the base circle there are some methods to avoid in interference first one is a 
increase the number of teeth on the pinion so minimum number of teeth for 14.5 full depth system is 32 for 20 degree full depth system 17 and for 20 degree step system 14 second is the increasing increased pressure angle increasing pressure angle will result in a smaller base cycle and the more portion above the base cycle will be involved but as the pressure angle increases to a much more value the path of contact will decrease therefore the contact ratio will decrease so in order to transmit power it is required that always uh, uh, that minimum one teeth of the gear should be should be in engagement all the time with the another gear so um, very high uh, very high pressure angle is not recommended for to uh, in order to avoid interference use long and short addendum gearing in this method the addendum of the pinion is made longer than the standard addendum and the addendum of the mating gear is made shorter than the standard addendum now the backlash backlash is the amount by which the tooth of the mating gear uh, is the amount by which the tooth space of the gear is exceeds by the tooth thickness of the another uh, mating gear in order to avoid jamming of the teeth due to thermal expansion force analysis power is transmitted in gears by the tooth of the driving gear on the machine tooth of the driving gear the tooth on the driving gear exerts a force on the driving gear which is represented here pn and this force is making an angle alpha with the common tangent of these two circles these two p circles this this gear is the pinion which is the driver gear and this is the gear which is driven gear and this force pn has two components one in the tangential direction and other one in the radial, radial direction pinion is the driving gear so it will exert a force pn which is shown here uh, onto gear so pinion will exert force pn and it has two components pt will be in this direction and pr will be in the direction which is shown here since pinion is uh, pinion is pinion is applying a force pt and pr in in the direction is shown here and the gear will apply the forces in the opposite direction of of this direction so the torque if power is transmitted in kilowatt then the torque transmitted by the gear will be 60 into 10 to the power 6 kilowatt power divided by 2 pi n n is the speed of rotation and here torque is in newton newton into mm torque will be equal to the force into the radial distance which is d by 2 so here the tangential force is pt pt into d by 2 equal to the torque and pt comes out to be 2 into mt divided by d dash d is the piece circle diameter radial component can be calculated with the help of this diagram and PR will be equal to PT 10 alpha and the resultant force will be PT divided by cos alpha the above analysis has the following assumptions that 
as the point of contact moves pn the magnitude of pm will also change but this effect is not considered in this analysis second is that the the one pair uh, one pair of teeth is in contact at all times so one teeth of pair takes the en entire load third is the this analysis is valid under the static condition when the gear is right running very low speed low velocities so thanks for listening this lecture